I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about a new way of living. It's not really a new way of living, it's the way that human beings should be living right now. You see, when we get stuck in disease, when we get stuck in depression, cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular, all of that stuff, we have medicine, we have nutrition, we have exercise, we have superfoods, we have vitamins, we have minerals, we have all of that stuff around us, which is good, which is required. What we're missing out is the environment of the body. You see, we have an internal environment and we have an external environment. The external environment controls and impacts the internal environment as well. Inside of you, you have trillions of cells. Depending on the kind of disease or the condition that you have, a lot of these cells are not working in harmony with each other. You have a liver problem, you have a problem in your liver, your cells aren't working the right way. Likewise with your heart or a brain tumor or a breast cancer or whatever it is. <clears throat> when you have a disease in your body, you have a disharmony amongst your cells. Your cells are not working in rhythm. There's no homeostasis. Things are out of place, which is why you have discomfort and which is why you have a disease. So we bring in medicine. Good. We bring in nutrition. Very good. We start changing our sleep habits. Very good. We do all of these things together because let me give you a simple example. You can dump all of this onto a patient, but if you don't put the patient in the right environment, the patient ain't going to heal. Let's take a simple example. Okay, certain computer chips, certain high-powered computers, they need a separate environment. Ever looked at the IT room? There are air conditioners, there are fans, there are blowers because the computer chips the machinery requires a certain temperature, a certain environment, so it doesn't go bust. That's a simple example. What else can you look at? You know, certain animals, certain domesticated dogs can only sleep in an air-conditioned environment. They need cool air. The environment has to be conducive to that particular animal. Likewise, certain foods. If you keep certain foods out, you don't refrigerate them, there's bacteria, there's mold, there's fungi that grows in them. You store it properly, you create the right environment around that food, guess what? That food doesn't spoil, that food doesn't go bad. So you see, everything requires the right environment. Every single thing requires the right environment. You buy a luxury car that has ultra leather seating inside, it can only work with the air conditioner on. You can't roll down your windows on a humid day, it's gonna spoil the leather. That leather requires a certain environment. Now, look at healthcare today. We have everything around, but we don't have the right environment. Imagine what would happen if we took a patient or anyone, I don't wanna use the word patient, anyone who's suffering from any condition, we gave them what they needed. We gave them medicine, nutrition, advice, whatever, but then we also created an environment that allows their internal environment to start working in harmony. You see, all the meds that you take are designed to suppress your symptoms, not change the environment within you. You gotta change that environment. All the food that you're eating, okay, is to create more nourishment for your cells to work, but still, you can nourish a cell, but if the cell has the wrong environment, the cell isn't gonna work the right way. So the new way of living talks about this environment that we, not, we need to create for us right now. Whether we have depression, cancer, diabetes, we're looking to get healthier, we're looking to get more energetic, we're looking to lose weight, we're looking to personally evolve. Because to personally evolve, we gotta feel happy. We can't be weighed down by negative emotions all the time. That won't work for us. Wrong environment. Imagine taking a patient who needs to heal and putting them in a toxic environment where people are screaming and shouting and talking about death and talking about negativity. Do you think the patient's gonna get better? No, may have the best doctor, the best nutritionist, the best of everything, but the environment is wrong. We need to take the person and put them in the right environment. Imagine you're a patient of depression, you're going through a lot of negativity, you've gone through post-traumatic stress disorder, and you're suddenly put in an environment which is noisy, where there's anger, there's hatred, there's conflict. Are you gonna heal? Absolutely not. Even though you're on the best antidepressants, you ain't gonna get better. Let us learn today how we can create that environment for us without giving up the best of life. Okay, this new way of living will allow you to even socialize, have fun, do everything, because that's what living is about. The easiest way is to tell people to stop doing everything. People are going into extremes today, extremes, extremes for health, extreme diets, extreme exercise. There's no fact where people have stopped masturbating completely. All of these are extremes. I'm not against them. But why do you need an extreme? The human body needs balance. People are going into abstinence like they're trying to get enlightened to solve a health problem. No. Your body just needs balance, the right environment outside of you, the right environment inside of you, and then whatever you need, medication or nutrition or whatever it takes. 
I'm talking about the circadian rhythm today. That rhythm determines how we are inside that environment. You see, human beings are the only people who have abused the laws of nature, period. That's why even the best of medicines don't work at some point, because everything has to work within the laws of nature. To make it very quick before I give you eight or nine simple points of how you can change your life right now, today, okay? I'm saying this because we already ran this way of living with thousands of people, thousands of people across the world over the last one week. And the feedback that has come in has been nothing short of phenomenal. Everyone, if they've not had many things to say about how it's changed their life, they've had at least one powerful thing to say. You're gonna learn that right now. Number one, we have clocks in us. We have a biological clock. It's called our suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's in the hypothalamus of our brain. That controls hundreds of clocks working in our body. You know, your cells respond to clocks. They have little clocks and everything works with timing. Digestive enzymes, when to produce the digestive enzymes, when to stop it, <clears throat> when to balance your hormones, when the liver should start detoxifying, when your brain should relax, when the glymphatic system of your brain should start activating, when your bowel movement should start moving, when your intestines should start absorbing. All this works according to a clock, time. You have little clocks in you which are controlled by your suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is your biological clock. Think of a day in your life if you didn't have access to time on your phones, on your watch, on a clock, your entire day would be chaos because everything in your day, in your external environment, works according to time. The same thing in your body. Now imagine if your body lost track of time. It was not synced in. There was no rhythm in time. Your clocks were all in disharmony with each other. What would you have? Chaos equals disease, suffering, pain, inflammation, memory loss, weight gain, hormonal disorders, poor skin, acne, hair, and all of that stuff together. Disharmony in your body. Can be fixed with medicine, nutrition alone? Absolutely not. Effective to some extent. Complete healing, recovery? No, the environment has to change. So this clock is controlled by light and day, okay? By lightness and by darkness. That is the circadian rhythm. Those are the laws of nature, which no matter how smart you are, how rich you are, what color you are, how much power you have, you can't escape the laws of nature. The, la the laws of nature, okay, spare no one. You gotta operate within it, to have great health and a great life, you operate it out of it, out of the out of the laws of nature. You have problems. As simple as that. Nature and the universe doesn't care who you are. Okay, these are all our conscious minds. All these status, you know, identities that we built because we want to feel special, because we want to cover up some low self worth, or we want to cover up our unworthiness, our guilt, our anger that we're trying to hide. These are all emotional identities that we create for ourselves. Nature doesn't care about that. Remember that. Nature does not care about that. So how do we operate within these cycles of nature? When you start operating within these cycles of nature, everything's going to change, like I said. Okay? I'll guarantee you. Okay? I'll guarantee it to you because everyone is operating out of the laws of nature. We think we can choose what time we want to sleep every night. Every night it's a different sleeping time. Every night, every day we eat, eat at different timings every day. We exercise at different timings every day. One day we intermittent fast for 16 hours, the next day for 25 hours, the next day for 15 hours. You know, those clocks don't care about you. Those clocks have to work according to the rhythm of nature, period. And that's how we're going to learn to do everything within the, with the rhythm of nature. And when you follow this rhythm of nature, guess what? Even your fasting is going to become way easier. What if I told you that people who are fasting for 70 to 18 hours can achieve the same thing in 12 to 13 hours? Well, that's when you follow and operate within the cycles of nature. Rule number one, let's start from evening. Write down these rules or someone watching this may actually write it down for you. <clears throat> it's very simple. Now, these rules will require you to make certain lifestyle changes. I can't sort that for you. It's a will issue. You either do it or you don't. It's up to you. So number one, dinner as early as you can. The moment the sun sets, you want to try to eat dinner with the setting sun or at least within one hour after, after the sun is set, depending on where you live. You have an early dinner, okay? You select your bedtime. We're going to do this at least five out of seven days because I want you to enjoy your weekend. Okay, enjoy your weekend, sleep late, eat at different times, whatever you want. But I'm over here to tell you for the next five days, this is what I want you to do. Set your dinner time as early as possible. Set your sleep time. Whether it's 9.30, 10, 10.30 10 or 11, fix your sleep time because for the next five days, you're going to get into bed at the same time every day, irrespective of anything. One hour to one and a half hour before bedtime, you switch off all your screens. No TV, no iPad, no gadgets, nothing. Read a book, make love, communicate, talk, meditate, deep breathe, whatever it is in that one hour, no screens. So early dinner, okay, finish watching your Netflix, do what you want because an early dinner means you have at least two to three hours before you switch off your phone. Switch off your phone, get into bed at the same time. Sleep, 
try to wake up with sunrise or before sunrise, not after sunrise. Once you wake up, you don't switch your phones on for the next one and a half to two hours. Get up, look outside your window if you can't step out. I want you to connect with natural light, whether there's sun or no sun. I want you to look at the sky, I want you to look at the trees, whatever it is that you have. Natural light communicates with your suprachiasmatic nucleus. It is needed to reset your circadian rhythm and begin the day function. So you need to look at that light. Then begin your morning rituals, Hopefully, you wake up, you poop immediately without having to force it out of your system. Morning rituals, get your meditation done, whatever it is that you want to do. No phones on for the first two hours, okay? Then you can switch your phone on, start. You finish 12 hours now, sunset to sunrise. If you're hungry, go ahead and eat. That 12 hours was brilliant for you. If you're not hungry, you can fast for 13 hours or 14 hours. Listen to your body. Don't make it a competition. Don't look to see what the world is doing. For everyone who put you into a box of 16.8, you need to ask them, why not 15.9? Why not 17.7? They won't have an answer for you. That's just a box. You may get the same results when you fast according to the cycles of nature. So break it in 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours. That's up to you. Don't force yourself, okay? If you're eating, get most of your calories after sunrise. This is when your metabolic power is the highest, then and lunchtime. Lunchtime is where you should get most of your calories. You have, an e you have a dessert in the fridge, a piece of cake that you were planning for dinner time, bring it down to afternoon because your dinner's gotta be the lightest meal of the day. All your calories happen when the sun is at its highest point, when your metabolism is at its highest point. That is breakfast or mid-lunch or, yeah, or, or midday, whatever it is that you're eating. Get all your calories there so by the time you reach your early dinner, by evening, you've got most of your, cal most of your calories in. You wanna have a small dinner but fulfilling. You can have carbs, protein, fat, whatever it is. Less carbs for sure. Cut out carbs, that's up to you. But your dinner has to be lighter than your lunch and your breakfast. Fix your exercise at the same time. If you're a morning person, you like getting it done in the morning, fix your exercise time for the next five days. Don't change your exercise time. Okay, do not change your exercise time. If you're an evening person, you like exercising in the evening, fix your time again. So we've broken up fast. We've gone through either a breakfast, a midday a lunch, Okay, and then uh, we fix our exercise time, we come back to dinner. These are the rules. Spend some time in nature. If you can't go outside because of lockdown, look outside, get some sunlight on you, whatever it is, connect with nature because nature also controls your circadian rhythm. Is this a difficult thing to do? For most people who have excuses, it's the most difficult thing to do. For people who are fed up of being sick, or fed up of being tired throughout the day, it's time you realign your circadian rhythm. Because like I said, okay, you have technology around you, you have entertainment around you. I'm not saying don't use it. You can still fit it in the circadian rhythm at the right time. Everything, I've not deprived you of anything that you want at the right time. You wanna socialize? No one's asked you to socialize Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That is ridiculous. That is a problem with society. Socialize Friday night, socialize Saturday night, Sunday, spend with your family, that's good enough. But the other five days, you respect your body. And if you're sick, if you're really, really sick, I would want you to take your life and your body and put it into the circadian rhythm for seven days out of seven days. If you want something in life, you gotta make sacrifices to achieve it. You gotta take it. You know, when I look at all of our sick cancer, cancer patients and sick people out there, you know, it's so easy to forecast how their disease is gonna turn out because they become so dependent on the outside world to heal them. Everything, chemicals, radiation, all of that, I'm not against it, but they're not willing to change the environment within their body. Your medication is useless if you don't have the right environment within your body. So try this for the next five days. I'll recap it very, very quickly. It's not difficult. When you do it, you are gonna change. You're gonna feel happier. Because guess what? When you operate within the laws of nature, everything changes. Your cortisol level. I had forgot one more rule. If you drink coffee in the morning, it's gotta be two to three hours after you wake up. And here's the simple science. The simple science. People who are only addicted to their weight loss, they follow all the bullshit with people telling you to drink coffee on an empty stomach, put ghee in your coffee, drinking on an empty stomach, all of that crap. Extremes, extremes. Here's the simple science. When you wake up in the morning, your cortisol is already high. Your adrenaline and cortisol is already high. If you put coffee immediately into your system, you're increasing more and more cortisol. More and more cortisol, that's a stress hormone. Remember that, you have too much of it, inflammation, fat gain, and everything else. Wait for two to three hours and enjoy, then enjoy your coffee. 
So look at the beauty of nature. You wake up, you do your morning rituals, you work out, you do all of that stuff, switch on your phone, get into your day, have your breakfast or break your fast and after eating something, have your coffee. That's two to three hours after you wake up because your cortisol starts falling down. You don't want to put more cortisol into a body that already has increased cortisol. This is really, really detrimental for you. So for the next, I didn't take away your coffee. I just told you to have it at the right time. Do this for the next five days. You are guaranteed some change. Do it with an open mind and an open heart. And then you realize that, hey, I feel so good. This is normal living. What I was doing before is abnormal. That is what society has defined, which is abnormal. It is not normal. That is why you feel abnormal when you have to keep doing abnormal things to keep a face up in society. You gotta dress abnormally, dress for other people, look a particular way for someone all the time. That's a huge stress, that's abnormal. When you fit into the circadian rhythm of life, everything's gonna get simpler for you. And if you have a disease right now, put yourself into the simple way of living. You need it to get better. The best nutrition in the world won't heal you without the right environment. The best medication in, in the world will not work for you without you being in the right environment. You know, the same way toxic people around you disturbs your inside environment, you know, your own stress levels, your heart, your mind, it is the same thing with everything else. And right now, as I speak to you, you have 100 plus functions happening every second of the day and every second of the night. They are controlled by clocks. Those clocks are controlled by your biological clock, which is controlled by your circadian rhythm. Everything I spoke about will get you into the circadian way of living. So break away from extremes. Most of the fittest and the happiest people in the world do not use extremes. They use simplicity and they are physically fit and emotionally happy and they have great lives. The people with extremes are always angry, deprived, psychologically deprived, always fighting, always arguing, all of that stuff. They may just have a great body to show. That's about it. That's about it. At the end of the day, human life is about how you feel. Everything is about how you feel. Think about it. I'll take a minute or two more. Think about it. You can get a great orgasm, okay, from two different people, an ugly person or a hot person. As long as the orgasm was good and it felt good, that's all that matters. You don't care who you got it from. It was great. You can have tasty food made by a Michelin star chef or made by your servant at home or made by your mom at home. The feel good factor is the same. Doesn't matter who made it. What really matters is how you felt, okay? Someone, it could be anyone. Someone could be super famous and says something to you that makes you feel good. You could meet a no one on the road who you don't even know who says something that can make you feel good in your heart. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where it came from. All that matters in human psychology and human physiology is how we feel. So at the end of the day, ask yourself this question every day. I call it reflection. How do you feel? If you feel good, you had a great day, your life is going on well. If you felt bad, you gotta look at self-care. You gotta go in and find out what is it that is making you not feel good. And you gotta correct that. Because at the end of the day, people talk about happiness, happiness, love, love. Everyone apparently has happiness and love, but they still don't feel good. So it's not about love, it's not about happiness. It's about what makes you feel good. And when we start operating within the laws of nature, guess what? We start appreciating simple things in life, simple joys in life, simple foods, simple movements, simple moments. And that ends up and translates into us feeling good. And the measure of your life is in how you feel, not what you have at the end of the day. So many people have so much, they still go to sleep empty every night. So many people have fame, they have money, they have great bodies, but they go to sleep feeling empty every night. So that clearly shows us that we don't need all of that. It's great to have it, but you need to feel fulfilled. And that comes from the simple things of life. Operate within the laws of nature and your life is going to change. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.